Oh no. No. No, no, no. Ugh. Well, I have to talk about this. This video is not meant to send hate or aggression towards the creators of the account. It's merely meant to criticize and educate people who don't see why this is wrong. Please don't attack people and be good. Trigger warning. Racism, mention of self-harm, ableism, mentions of suicide, mentions of the R slur, NSFW, and making fun of people with mental illnesses. Please be advised. Hello everybody, my name is Numhuts, and we're going to talk about the project that is using people with mental disorders to get clout and popularity, and it's gross. So let's talk about it. Tales from the DSM is a Twitter account with 200 plus followers and was created in January of 2021, and it's already causing problems, and it's only been up for like two months. How? Well, they decided to turn mental illness into cute gajinkas that are stereotypes of the mental illnesses that they're supposed to represent. It's gross and weird, and it bothered me enough to want to talk about it because it's just so strange. Like, what causes someone to do this? I have no idea. But it turns out that not only are they taking advantage of these mental illnesses, but also incredibly ableist and allow racism and ableism to run rampant in their Discord server. Oh, and also they encourage you to ship the disorders together and I... I don't know, guys. It's weird. So first, let's look at the designs themselves. From left to right, I'll look at the characters and explain each disorder and the designs themselves. Please correct me if I get any information wrong. I'm trying to be as respectful as possible. I don't have any of these d disorders myself. I am just taking what people have said about it that do have the disorders and their opinions on it. So if I say anything incorrect or you feel free to dis- like, feel free to disagree if you want to in the comments. This is an open discussion. I want to know what you guys think. First is STPD. STPD, or Schizotypal Personality Disorder, is a personality disorder that makes you act in ways that people without STPD may find strange or weird, and has symptoms like lack of emotion or inappropriate emotional responses, extreme social anxiety, and some paranoia as well. So the design itself is interesting, to say the least. Personally, I don't like her color palette, but the thing that bothers me the most is that they made her look like she's not like other girls, she's squirky! Which is weird, considering the symptoms of STPD. It's not a cute disorder and can actually lead to living a lonely life, and it shouldn't be drawn as someone who's cute and quirky. I also just don't like this design either, the color palette looks weird on this character. Next is SPD, or Sensory Processing Disorder. It's a disorder that leads someone to being overly sensitive to feelings, touch, smell, hearing, tasting, etc. And some symptoms can be overreaction to certain stimuli, and in some severe cases, things like being touched can lead to screaming, sounds can cause vomiting, crying, or hiding. Kids that are diagnosed with this often have a hard time adapting to change around them, and have a hard time interacting with other children. As far as this design goes, most people with SPD are actually children and teens, though some adults have it as well, so this character looking like adult feels incorrect to me, since it's more common for a child to have this disorder than an adult. The next one is PPD, or Paranoid Personality Disorder, which is characterized by, well, paranoia. Some symptoms of PPD are believing others are out to get them or harm them, doubting people's loyalty, and detaching oneself from other people. There's not much to say about the design other than they took a disorder that's debilitating and turned it soft and cute, which, n no, maybe don't do that. It's weird. That's weird to do. The next one is ASPD, or Antisocial Personality Disorder, or sometimes called sociopathy. And it is a disorder where a person struggles to show or can't show the ability to tell right from wrong. They're usually stereotyped as villains or murderers, etc. because of this. And they made a design where ASPD looks like a murderer or a villain. Well, they may not have intended it, his fangs, his red eyes, and his red color palette and everything just makes him seem like he's supposed to be a villain, which is an awful stereotype and actually incredibly harmful. I like the design, but not under the context that he is supposed to be ASPD. Bad move. The next one is HPD, or Histrionic Personality Disorder, that is a disorder that is typically classified as dramatic, erratic, or emotional. Some symptoms of HPD are shallow expressions of emotions, self-dramatization, and exaggerated emotion. Why the fuck?
fuck did they decide to sexualize her? Yes, some people with HPD can be sexual, but that does not mean you have to dress her up like that. Her skirt is incredibly short, short, and her dress is incredibly low cut. Typically, I don't mind designs like this. but when it's done to a disorder that sometimes might be sexual in nature, it turns into a harmful stereotype and it's gross and weird. Like, look at this fan art that one of the staff members drew. It just doesn't feel right. The next one is the most controversial one, BPD or Bipolar Personality Disorder. It's a disorder that impacts the way you think about yourself or others, and some symptoms can include an intense fear of abandonment, intense paranoia, or suicidal thoughts in anticipation of rejections. I think I'm gonna let the comments on BPD explain why she's problematic. Next is NPD, or Narcissistic Personality Disorder, which is a disorder where people have an inflated sense of their own importance and can often want to be the center of attention. Some symptoms of NPD is exaggerated self-importance, difficulty regulating emotions, and feeling moody or upset when they get less than perfection. Despite the way stereotypes would have you believe, a lot of people with NPD don't actually present themselves as better than anyone. So the crown is a miss for me. Next is DPD, or Dependent Personality Disorder, and it is characterized as an anxiety disorder with the inability to be left alone. There are a lot of different branches of DPD, but some of the most common symptoms of the disorder are relying on friends and family too much, feeling isolated or nervous alone, and being overly sensitive to criticism. I don't have a lot of things to say about her design. Not many people have said anything on her design, so I'm not going to say anything. If you have any issues with her design, please tell me in the comments. Next is AVPD, which is Avoidant Personality Disorder, a disorder where the individual can have severe social inhibition, sensitivity to critique and rejection, and a struggle to keep and maintain relationships. Some symptoms of APD are low self-esteem, self-isolation, and avoiding important gatherings like work. My issue with this one is that they made him seem like a soft, cute, ooh woo, protect him boy, when the disorder is actually quite serious. And finally, we have OCPD, which is Obsessive Compulsive Personality Disorder, which is a disorder that causes an individual to compulsively do things or actions like organizing or doing things repeatedly. Some symptoms of OCPD are rigid following of moral and ethical codes, an extreme devotion to work, and sometimes even hoarding behaviors. This design is one that is arguably one of the most stereotypical. A lot of people assume that if you have OCPD, your hair is perfect, your clothes are neat, etc. They often share the same stereotype that, quote, nerds share, which simply isn't true. The biggest issue that all of these designs share is that the artists tried to take disorders that are massive and vastly different in symptoms and ended up boiling them down to stereotypes because that's how a lot of people see these disorders. In reality, you can't do something like this with disorders that are so complex. These illnesses deserve the utmost care and respect when being represented, and some of these designs in particular need severe overhauling. So obviously this pissed a lot of people off, so how did the account respond to this? Well, simply, they posted and reblogged images like this which shows that they're aware of people's issues with the account and have thus continued to brush them off and continue to do what they do, despite the fact that they now know that it's problematic and hurting a lot of people with these disorders. Not only that, but they've posted these memes which further push the stereotypes of these disorders. The BPD one is particularly bad. I think it's interesting that instead of them rethinking their idea, they could be easily reworked to not be problematic. They're instead pushing back and continuing what they're doing and exposing other creators to their trash fire, knowing that they would inevitably get hate. But their Twitter isn't the only thing that's awful, their Discord is even worse. 
There's a lot of gross shit on their Discord, so I'm just gonna go down the list. One of the people on the DSM team is Angie, who is... something, that's for sure. They've said things like this. Bro, PPDs are clinically usually racist. Which is an awful statement to make. Like, what the fuck? Okay, sure. Not true at all? Is being racist a criteria to have PPD? Or is it just a coincidence? Or like, what led you to getting to this conclusion? Sorry bitches who make suicide jokes and block their friends aren't sexy. Oh good, so you don't like people with BPD on principle then. Yet again, using a stereotype of BPD. Yes, suicide jokes and blocking people who are friends is a symptom of BPD, and it's awful, but you should try to help your friend if they do this. Also, not all people with BPD do this, so Angie saying something like this further pushes the harmful stereotype on a group of people who sometimes do it, but not usually. Capitalizing on negative attention is my favorite thing in the world. Further proof to show that the DSM team really doesn't care about the disorders they're talking about. They just want to, as Angie said, capitalize on negative attention to get clout from people who are hurting. Classy. Angie, racist and ableist, pick a struggle. I will be both if it means I get to believe what I believe. Angie straight up admitting that they're racist and ableist. Hmm. Maybe not a good take for someone who's working with an account that is using characters who have neurodivergency. Talking about how they're going to make DID a harmful character of a disassociative identity disorder. Weird take, but okay, dude. They claim that they removed Angie as a staff member. Quote, in light of recent racist comments that came to light, we have removed Angie from the TDSM staff. Which, at first sounds awesome, like good, they got someone, they got rid of someone being problematic. However, when looking at this tweet though, it's clear that they only removed Angie because people were leaking the screenshots of what they were saying in the chat. Quote, that came to light. Unquote. That means that if these screenshots hadn't been released, they wouldn't have removed Angie as a staff member. It's also clear that they don't care because of certain other members saying awful things in chat and them not doing anything about it to monitor it. Moving on from Angie, did you know that the creators encourage shipping and NSFW of the Gajinkas? Let me remind you, mental disorders? Yup! Here is a screenshot of some of the roles in the Discord server, including some shipping tags and simp tags. Shipping mental disorders is disgusting because it downplays and romanticizes how severe these disorders can be and makes it soft and fluffy. That's just not okay. Here's a screenshot of a now deleted post from the Twitter itself. And here are a bunch of screenshots of people asking if they can draw NSFW or showing there's an NSFW channel in the Discord. Oh, by the way, some children managed to get into the NSFW channel, and the mod's reaction to this was to blame the children and insult them. Children lie about their age all the time. It's your job as a moderator of the server and as one of the owners of the account to remove and handle minors in inappropriate spaces. No one is going to attack you for doing that if you handle things properly. We keep seeing this person named Bug in some of the screenshots. Let's see more of what they have to say. Oh. Well, that's awful, but they couldn't possibly get more much worse than- Oh! Okay then! I did some research into who Bug was and I found this post, which talks about how Bug is actually an active member of r slash DID cringe, which is a subreddit made to make fun of people with disassociative identity disorder. Fun. Nathaniel is another person in the Discord, and I'm not sure if they're a staff member or just someone who chats there, but they are never regulated, saying things like this, 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 which isn't true, and just misinformation. And as you've seen already, their various usage of the R slur, which is a word that is used to discriminate and put down people with mental disorders. People with mental disorders are able to reclaim it, however the way Nathaniel uses it is derogatory, again in these examples. And using it derogatorily is not reclaiming it, that's just further using it as a weapon. 
and some other members in the server use it as well, like here, and Beyond Perfection. Yes, I'm going to talk about the things they've said too. So yeah, it seems like the staff and members of the DSM are real great people. But Gnome, what if they also have mental disorders? Yeah, what if? Having mental disorders doesn't excuse you from awful things you've done or said to or about people. Having mental disorders means that you have to be extra aware of these things that you're saying and hold yourself accountable. It's not that hard to hold yourself accountable when you've done things that are less than polite to the people around you. This account, Tales from the DSM, is an account made by a bunch of trolls on 4chan whose goal was to bait people with mental disorders and it was all for clout. So, yes, by making this video, I am taking the bait, but for a good reason. It's not to talk to them. I don't want to waste my time talking to people who don't care about human, like, basic human decency. It's to talk to the people who see this blog and think it's a legit thing and think that their mental disorders are being dealt with in a happy and non-problematic way. The people that are running this blog are purposely trying to hurt and warp your perception of mental disorders. They don't care about real life people who suffer from this stuff every day, and they don't care about the harmful stereotypes they spread about them. It's not good. If you have one of these disorders talked about, you're more than the stigma, and you're more than some overly cutesy OO design. You're valid, and you deserve happiness. This account is gross, and it's not funny, and it's harmful. They hide behind the title of trolling and baiting when they're really just trying to give an excuse to their ableist behavior. But how could something like this be done in a way that isn't absolutely awful? So, let's pretend that they aren't baiting. How could you do something like this without it being absolutely problematic? Easy! Their main fault with this is that they're making designs that are supposed to be exactly like the disorders, which are, frankly, too vast to fit into one character without boiling it down to stereotypes. There's too many people with too many different ways of dealing with their disorders with too many different, like, symptoms. The best way to go about something like this is instead of making the disorder into a person, make the person first and then give them the disorder. For example, the BPD design is immediately so much better when instead of her being the embodiment of BPD, but instead say, Roxy, a girl who happens to have BPD, and this is how she deals with the disorder. Obviously she'd still need some serious reworking, but it's already so much better than how it is originally. I understand that the blog has stated, quote, we would like to state that our disorder characters are not meant to represent the individual experience of anyone or meant to represent anyone with a certain disorder. They are based off the DSM criteria of each disorder, and we recognize that many people don't fit all those. But regardless, it gives that impression when you say that it is the disorder if they were a person. It makes it seem like the ultimate representation of a disorder, and it's impossible to do that with how vast a lot of these disorders are. Someone said this, Why the mental disorder jinkas are harmful even if people with those disorders okay them. No one singular person speaks for the majority. As someone with BPD, I was appalled by the characterization of BPD in the character art in which Tales from the DSM seems to have been portrayed. And I think that's important to keep in mind. Nobody fits in a perfect box. There's a lot I didn't cover in this video, like how the main artist for DSM is an Alistair from Has Been Hotel fan who draws country human Nazi NSFW and stuff like that, but it didn't really fit the video so I couldn't find a place to put it really. Just know that they did that and it's weird. And I had to see it and it was awful. <laughs> Good art? Awful context. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Please take care of yourself. Make sure to drink your meds and take your water. The drawing in the background today was my OC Chariot. A lot of you may remember Tenor, the character that was my intro for a while and some of the thumbnails. Well, he went through a bit of a redesign. I outgrew him and wanted a character that represented me more. So that's Chariot, who goes by predominantly they, them. If you like this art or this video, please feel free to, descri to describe me. Describe me in the comments. No, I'm joking. Subscribe to me. Turn on the notification bell so you know what, when I upload next, but also, you can follow me on any of my other social medias, I have a Tumblr and a Twitter that I post art on too. Those will be linked down below. If you like this video and you're new here, just, you know, leave a comment. Talk about the video with me. I want to talk about this with people. I think it's important. Um, I don't post often, but I try. Let me know what you guys thought about this, whether you agree, disagree, and I'll talk to you guys soon.